Good morning, everyone. Good morning. As a recently graduated senior from All High School Chicago West, um, on Chicago's West Side, I saw a lot that needed to be changed in my school, a lot that needed to be changed immediately. I saw that many issues inside my school were such, uh, those such as students um, who had low self-esteem and situations of violence, and it was never being addressed. I used to feel like if this issue or these issues don't get addressed immediately, then that will result in more and more of my classmates being put out on the streets and, or swept into violent situations and then eventually jail. My high school implemented a zero tolerance uh, disciplinary policies. Zero tolerance means that under no circumstances is a child to be spared from suspension, detention, and or expulsion, even in the most minor of infractions. Due to these policies, I saw my fellow students pushed out of school and denied their rights to an education. I saw students suspended for cursing, having a cell phone, and talking loud in the hallways. Do you have any idea what this has done to me? Just to walk through the hallways and be afraid to speak your voice because you're afraid to get put out of the schools. It's insanity. This approach to immediately suspend or expel any and all students for the most minor of offenses does not provide a teachable moment. Instead, it, it perpetuates a sense of guilt and alienation, and furthermore, holding back, or, holding back or kicking young people out and denying them an education perpetuates the criminalization of youth. Zero tolerance leaves no room for prevention and the lasting resolution uh, of conflict among the students and the schools. Approaches like restorative justice do address the conflict by providing students the opportunity to learn how to repair the harm that they've caused and strengthen the school's community. At Blocks Together, we are working to win a functioning peer jury and peer re resolution, a space and resources for peace circles and conversations for conflict and for conflict, conflict resolution, and no more unnecessary suspensions and push out of dozens of students. With zero tolerance policies, schools like Orr in Chicago move away from helping the students to simply getting rid of them and ignoring the problems. They've kicked them to the curb with no direction. To me, this is oppressive and no longer remains an educational issue, but a civil and human rights issue that requires law for reform. We are living in a day and time where the, where the schools have silenced the voices of the students, a day and time where the students are being funneled out of institutions dedicated to education and into institutions focusing on confinement and control. It's lack of resources to help the students with social emotional issues, with suspensions certain, which suspensions certainly don't help with that, is creating an unequal system. As a member of the Blacks Together Youth Council, an organization where I sit as a youth organizer, we have been fighting the zero tolerance policy for years and will remain in battle for years to come. We are working to replace zero tolerance discipline with restorative justice in Chicago school in order to truly meet the needs of the Chicago students. Our organization wishes to work with other organizations across the country, the, across the country to, to, change and, uh, to change policies and support the young people. To that end, we are proud to be here today as a part of Dignity in Schools campaign, National Week of Action, and we, um, and we support the students, parents, educators, and advocates who are pushing back against push-outs. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm Jamila Day, Voice of Russia. <coughs> um, I, would, I wish to direct my question to you two, parent and student here. Um, uh, and, and you provided me the perfect segue of school culture, but when students see uh, their friends being denied an education, they themselves are, are being uh, disproportionately punished for infractions, and that then in turn affects the, uh, affects the parent um, in the relationship that you see when you cannot simply go to your administrators and say, look, I vouch for my kid, it didn't happen. Um, what kinds of things can students who are in the situation and the parents start to do, start to be thinking about, to help work within the framework to, number one, not have such harsh punishments, but also help us reporters know to take a look at something that may be happening, particularly something. Um, well, while I was in, in my school, or high school in Chicago, on Chicago's west side, and the school was turned around, um, we have a, a new principal currently residing in, in Orr, and when she came in, um, her immediate thing was to suspend students for minor infractions because her excuse was she wanted to get a more respect, a more respectful environment. And my opinion was that this, um, in order to get this respectful environment, she had to oppress the students. So um, what she did was she she would um, 
she would suspend the students left and right. She would suspend them for uh, minor infractions for reasons that, you know, you can get a slap on the wrist for. And so I'm walking through the halls of my school, and I'm wondering where all my friends are going. And then it's like after being suspended, they come to me after their suspension or their term is up, uh, after the um, suspension is over. And they come to me and they say, something has to be done about this. Something has to be done because she's going crazy in this school. Like, she's suspending us for reasons that that we shouldn't even be suspended for. What can we do about this? And so I looked around the school, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking around my school, and I see that there are no administrators who are trying so, to support the students and trying to hear the students' voice. So I realized that I worked with an, with, with an organization known as Blacks Together, and they work to implement restorative justice practices in the school so they can stop the immediate suspensions, immediate detentions, immediate expulsions um, against the students. So I say that the students have to go to other students so they can go to resources outside of the school that are not helping them on the inside of the school so they can address this issue because the um, administrators are ignoring their voices and oppressing them and forcing them to remain quiet and not speak against the rules that they don't think are just.